They will zoom in, yeah? We haven't seen them? The, they are not on the screen yet. Okay. We'll, we'll wait there. Did you... Are you in this room? Is this the right meeting? Oh, wait, jeez. Oh, the, here's the... Welcome to Court Cousins Germany. My name is Gunther and this is Uwe. Stick around because we have great show coming. We are going to be on with the Court Cousins talking about Eurobasket and a time that Franz saves the village. He's good. Welcome everybody to Court Cousins episode 27. My name is Kyle. I'm joined as always by my beautiful cousin, Jason the Peach. Yeah, you're beautiful today, baby. Wow. Because we've got a great show for a one-year anniversary show, as it were. Mm. It's been a year since we started doing this. And, um, come a long way, baby. We have come a long way, man. Uh, it's really extraordinary to be here. Thank you all for, for sticking with us through this journey. Yeah, if you weren't watching... We may not be doing this. Well, yeah. we might be, but no. we wouldn't be recording it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a great show. We're going to check in with each other for the Okiki Are You OK K social mm-hmm. emotional check in. We'll scour the interwebs in our social media roundup looking for your posts about our beloved franchise. We'll fill in the blank. We'll check in with our friends across the pond. In Court Cousins, Germany, as you saw from the intro there. Excited to talk to these guys. They know their Eurobasket, that's for sure. electric. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be great. And then we'll finish off, stick around, for the large ending rapid fire questions. Mm. Before all that hijinks and excitement, we do have to shout out our all-stars and second cousins on our Patreon. They really help fuel this locomotive. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Real Ones, Magic Player History, Al from Ozone Podcast, Bernie Bernie Pichet, Matthew Bell, Dan Young, Gloria and Damien, Yadi, Connor, and the Polish Wonder. Broncos country. Let's ride. That's a different type of shout out from the Peach there. I guess he's excited for football season. I'm excited for football season. I'll ask you a question about it later. Okay. All right. And uh, as all we do every single month, if you're in that Patreon, even for $5 a month, you're entered in to win our jersey giveaway. And we're also going to be, when we reach our next goal, adding more giveaways every month. So the winner of this month's jersey giveaway, drum roll please, is Al from the Ozone Podcast. So congratulations, Al. Thanks for supporting us. We'll reach out and get your information and send that jersey of your choice over to you, buddy. Excellent. Yeah, we're going to be giving away more stuff later. Look at this yep. hat. It lights up. It's amazing. We got team sets with Franz and Jalen rookies in there, plus mm-hmm. much, much more. Some stuff you can drink out of. It's going to be good. Plus, our website is going to be going live soon, a shop where you can buy shirts and mugs and all kinds of stuff with our faces and logo on it. I'm pumped about it. I've been working on it a lot, so I'm finally excited. Hopefully, by the time this airs, it's already done. You can go look right now. I can't even. What even is this? We're doing a podcast. We're like official or something. <laughs> is, this, is this what the young kids call adulting? <laughs> I don't know. I, am I using that Maybe, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I definitely wouldn't know. I spend my days with teenagers at a school. So, so you're always we'll, adulting. Yeah. yeah, I guess. But uh, again, we're going to be giving away those prize packs, as Peach said. So keep an eye out for those uh, throughout, throughout the show. All right, right into our social emotional check-in, uh, how we start every show. We care about each other. We are cousins. We want to want to see how you're mm. doing, Peach. Yeah, court cousins not just a gimmick. No. It's no, real. it's a real thing. And and this check-in, we've asked our Patreons to suggest some pay, some check-ins that we can do. Mm-hmm. This runs from real ones. Thanks for this the Okiki are you okay K check-in. So Peach, are you okay K for the Okiki check-in? I am okay. Thanks for checking in. Okay. Um I, I'm 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 more than okay because I'm on vacation. Ooh. I had a long run of working some weird hours, mm-hmm. getting up at the ass crack of dawn, or working till the end of the day. And now I got a good week where I can just kind of do whatever I want. And I've I've made this uh, little graphic here of Camel's Hump, which is in the Green Mountain State of Vermont, where I'm from. Camel's and, toe. No, Camel's Hump. Oh. See how the, the kind of looks like a hump oh, there? Oh, yeah. got it. Uh, it's a popular mountain yeah. and uh, in the Appalachian Range. Uh, <laughs> but there's a, there's a picture of uh, Chumo Kiki in high school playing for Westlake in Georgia. But uh, I'm going back to my old stomping grounds tomorrow. Ah. Uh, the 100th year of the Champlain Valley Fair. You wouldn't know about it if you're not a native Vermonter, but it's the biggest fair in the whole state. 
everybody goes there at some point. You're going to run into a ton of people you know. So I thought, I haven't been to the fair in over 10 years. And it used to be something, you know, when you're in Vermont, you're not close to Disney World or anywhere else where there's rides or that kind of level of fun. So every year, one week, this thing would come. <laughs> There's huge acts doing concerts. It's a big. I know you're a city guy. No, this is hilarious like, to me. But yeah. back in the world, that you know, we're not growing like huge pumpkins and winning. I mean, they do that there, yeah. and there are like goats and, and livestock there, and they do yeah. raise pigs. You know what? It's a little. Yeah, it's it's a little well. rural, yeah. but but it's what we had, and it was a ton of fun. Hell so I'm yeah. looking forward to going back and, and seeing a bunch of old friends and and. Uh, and they're young kids now, as it turns out. So uh, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. How can you be in a bad mood when you're just starting on day two of a uh, week-long vacation? Drinking some beers, knocking down some some milk bottles, man. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. Are you? Uh, how are you? Are you OKK? Okay, <laughs> I am OKK okay, for the Okiki check-in today. I, I picked also a young Chuma Okiki. We mm. both kind of went with the youthful path here. Mm -hmm. I chose this image of Chuma Okiki in a Lakeland Magic jersey. This mm. is when he was kind of doing his recuperation from the ACL in college and, and just getting back on track. He was growing. He was just developing into the, the player we're seeing come into his own before our eyes. And I, I'm doing a lot of growth myself right now. The lady and I are doing this relationship therapy thing, which is really uncomfortable at times. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually seeing myself change and, and seeing my perspective grow. Mm. And it's just been a really valuable experience. I'm feeling in a really positive space because I'm continuing to push myself and continuing to grow into adulthood. I'm not just mm. kind of sticking with it. I'm trying to keep becoming a better Chumo Kiki. Wow. Yeah. And then the plants, which you were growing, we talked about last week, yeah. and uh, and the children. So it is tons of growth. You should have put a growth chart next to him. Where's maybe the I, canvas skills, bro? Yeah, I, I, maybe I'll bring those in for the for the post. He's edit. saving it for the thumbnails, which yeah, has been killing it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we we do our check ins every single episode, and sometimes they're light, and we we have fun. We do our Canva thing, and we we try to. But it is there is a serious piece to this. Checking in with each other is important. We do live with each other. It's important to check in and see how you're doing, Peach. And we want to encourage you all out there to check in with your loved ones, your friends, in a real way. Not just, hey, how you doing? Good. See you later. Mm -hmm. Like, really, hey, how's it going, man? What's up? How you been? T tell me about your life and listen. Yeah, reach out. Check in with a neighbor if you haven't seen him in a few weeks. You know, just be alert. Yeah. And, and in my life, um, someone that has close to very some of my very close friends um, recently took their own life and it's been a real hard thing um, it's kind of crazy that Luke Sylvia he just had his birthday and we wanted to highlight that he put out a call for folks to donate to the 988 suicide and crisis hot, hot lifeline so if you're able and this is an issue that is close at all to your heart mm -hmm. we want to encourage you to to jump on and, and follow Luke in this mission and, and donate if you can. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, one of the things about the magic community. We're always talking about how good everyone is. Um, and uh, this is one of those those good moments that uh, I just felt like we needed to share and continue to spread that love to all the people who watch our show as well. Uh, because it's so important that this exists for people. I mean, sadly, I think we all know someone who has committed suicide yeah. uh, or has been affected by this. And it's something that's 100% stoppable. Yeah. So... The more things we can have like this uh, to help stop that from happening in the future, the better the world will be. So uh, if, you can, if you can help, please donate. So let, let's flow. Let's, let's talk about using that good energy and mm. flow right into the social media roundup. Mm. In this segment, we scour the interwebs looking for your posts that are intriguing, insightful, or just downright hilarious mm. about our Orlando magic. And talking about good vibes, there haven't been anything to really top the mm -hmm. good vibes that Mo Bamba has been putting into the Magic community and into the community in um, the Ivory Coast. Yep. And at, in the Ivory Coast, a town or a village in the Ivory Coast, I'm not sure exactly the location in that country, he donated a whole facility. I'm sure you all have heard about it at this point. A couple basketball courts, electricity, running water to, to the town. Right. And just you know, seeing the smile on Mo's face, mm -hmm. I, I feel like... Mo is really kind of getting in touch with the, the deepest meaning of what it means to be human right now. Yeah. And I'm just excited to see Mo come back with this positive energy mm -hmm. that he's going to bring back to the squad. I mean, he's always been 
Yeah. An amazingly so. positive dude. Right. But I don't know. I, I think this is a type of seminal moment, especially for a young man. I, and Mo, all these guys are really young men yep. in comparison to us, at sure. least. Yeah. Early 20s, he's doing something so generous with himself of his time and his money. Yeah. It's amazing. And I think he's just going to get back all that much more from what he's been given. Yeah, I would agree. It, uh, it it should be when you have an off season or a vacation or whatever it is, you need some stuff to like refresh. But sometimes you need something to just kind of make your soul feel good. Yeah, man. And, and you can see it on Mo Bamba's face that he's getting that right now. And you know what? I think I found a scoreboard that we might lead all other NBA teams in, and that's court dedications in the off season. We now have three courts. What we got, Devin? Devin, and then Mo has Mo. two here. Oh, There's okay. Two courts oh, you're at counting this two. Okay. I'm counting both courts. There. All right. It's yeah, three fair. total. That's it's fair. pretty solid. That's fair. Yeah. I'm just saying, our guys are yeah. making a lot of good use of the off season. You see all these guys; they're working out. You see, yep. you see Cole going over to watch uh, Franz at EuroBasket. Yep. I mean, you're seeing a lot of positive things around the Magic guys and what they're doing. So they either have a killer publicist that's covering up all the negative stuff they're doing, yeah. or they're just good people, I think which is fantastic. Right. It makes them easy to root for. And I think as you're starting to see, I don't know if you've noticed an uptick, when I'm looking around YouTube, tons mm -hmm. of videos about how the Orlando Magic might have the best young core. The yeah. Orlando Magic yeah. are going to come out of nowhere. Okay, you guys are late to the party, but it's cool that you're, you're finally getting on board. But it's easy to like this team. They don't have one of those guys that is hateable or somebody that you don't respect. No, Peace, we're going to talk it's about nice. DeJounte Murray later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to talk about another player that I've lost a lot of respect for yeah, on the as a result of his of offseason coin, antics. Yeah, the, on the other side of the coin, <laughs> where all our eye guys are, you know, Cole Anthony's working at children's camps and Mo Bama's dedicating cords along with Devin Kennedy. Right. Peach, who, uh, what's going on? With Meanwhile, James Harden at his birthday party throws his cake into the ocean. Not sure if that was a real cake or not. It looks a little sus to me. Uh, and also, a little baby gives him 250K. Wait, a little baby? Well, it's a grown man, but oh. it says here his little baby. Oh, okay. So, I don't okay. know. Probably a he's rap a handle of some yeah, sort. He's a, um, it's anyway, big. It's big in the gives him a quarter of a billion dollars for his birthday. He wrapped it up nice, and he pulled it out in the stacks. Wow. Why is James Harden living his life like he's in his early 20s and he's a, a millionaire with nothing to lose? Like, yeah. this is why you don't win, bro. Yeah. You're not in the gym working out. You're not doing anything good. And the thing is, if I had this, if you showed this to him, he'd probably do one of those memes where he looked at you like this and then put a post up about how he basically gave that quarter of a million dollars to some charity or whatever and then looks at you like, I did my part. No, man, be out there. Be doing stuff. Be doing stuff that's positive. Don't be on social media with this as as your centerpiece go out there and be with the community like mo Bamba. we on my screen right now i'm literally looking at those two posts which anger me and then mo Bamba in a sea of children yeah. and it's just like two completely Vastly opposite different. posts yeah. two completely different teams going in completely different directions <laughs> sadly yeah james I harden is such a talented player imagine if he got in the co if he cared imagine yeah. if he actually cared and prepared properly and you know get did a workout like Luka Doncic and slimmed up or like was in the gym working or giving back to the community. And his soul is just going to be empty at the end of the summer. Oh. <laughs> and I don't expect much from his, his addition to the Sixers this year, which is too bad because I think Embiid is still in his prime Yeah, and should yeah. have a nice season. But... Oh, definitely. Embiid's in his prime. I mean, they're, they're depending on James Harden. And, you know, like you said, I'd I'm be mad sure, if I'm a Sixers I'm sure fan. Harden does tons of charitable work and, and gives a, uh, a lot I know he gives back of his cash for sure, but for me, you know, being a teacher of young adults, it just upsets me when I see folks with a great platform on social media kind of putting out these images of like quick money and not caring about generosity. Yep. It's just not the right message right. that when you're a role model that you really want to be putting out there. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not going to begrudge James Harden having a laugh and having a good time. We do all types of gags on yeah. this show. But at the same time, it's you know. Four, it's like a four-tier cake, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and he just turns and chucks it in the ocean. Like, have some gratitude, James. Now, I get that you don't want the carbs, and I like that you're watching your yep. weight. Okay, yeah, maybe but, that's it. But uh, yeah. maybe somebody else on the boat wanted some of that cake. Yeah. May, a baker may have worked a long-ass time on that yeah. cake. Some work and effort went into it, and you just dump it in the Polluting ocean. Polluting the ocean. Where some fish is probably going to eat it and die because there's so much sugar in it. Yeah. I mean, PETA, let's go. Get on this guy. <laughs> 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 All right, well, um, let's see. This next post is from 
Bucket Spot Peach, is that right? Yes, and I believe it was Dime Cinemas and Bucket Spot. Oh, they got on there. to the NBA Bad Contract Team. There they are. So they selected five players, five contracts. Right. Russell Westbrook, $47 million a oh, year left man. on that contract. It's nice contract. Gordon Hayward has two years, $61 million left. Tobias Harris has two years, $76.9 million left. Mm-hmm. Ben Simmons has three years, a buck thirteen, and we have Kevin Love with one year, twenty nine ish, on that. Let me dole out some props to people that aren't pictured on that screen right now, and that is NBA agents. Yeah, you the real MVPs. That is some work. But you know what? All these guys can somewhat produce at least. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not a. I mean, Gordon Hayward's probably the one I like the least on here. If I had to pick one. Yeah. Um, I don't know where you land on that, but at least the other guys are produ- – I mean, Westbrook's contract is bananas, but that was a big contract before he even got there. So, you know, it just – it is what it is. But at least he can still produce triple doubles. Like, Yeah, I mean, this, this is tough. You're asking me to pick one. I think at this point, Kevin Loves isn't that bad. The, the Cavaliers yeah, Kevin Loves is okay. can see the light at the end of the sure. tunnel. They only have one more year. Right. But – they He's were, a player coach too. He's a good guy for the team. Well, he was he is now, but they rewarded him with this. This was like a four or five year contract a it was while weird ago. When he got it, yeah. And it was an albatross for that first couple years when tough. they were losing. Yeah. He was disgruntled. He treated Colin Sexton like crap. Like mm-hmm. he he was yelling at him on the court. You know, just really not being a good teammate mm-hmm. in my opinion. He was Kevin Hate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now that they're winning, all of a sudden he's Kevin Love again. Kevin Love, you know. So they're I won't I won't begrudge. That's not too bad. One mm-hmm. year left. I think if I had to really hate on one of these, it would be the Russell Westbrook, mm-hmm. only because okay. the other one would be Gordon Hayward. But Charlotte Hornets, they kind of have to overpay. They have yeah, room. Yeah. They're in a they're in a situation like us. It's not the sexiest franchise to come to for free agents. You kind of have to overpay. We're mm-hmm. hoping, ladies and gentlemen, that our magic with this core, with the new training facility, by the it's a way, it's a beaut. all of these things are making us a destination where we don't have to kind of grovel mm-hmm. and overpay tremendously for free agents. Yeah, ironically, a town that can get people to come to it from <laughs> yeah, literally all, all over the globe all the world. can't get free agents. Right. So no, we're correcting that. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, correct- that. we're definitely taking corrective action. So I don't blame the Hornets for kind of taking that leap gordon hayward has just been nicked up forever so that's probably the worst on the list in mm. terms of what you're getting right but i just the the lakers traded away a bunch of good guys good pieces and they knew what they were getting in russell westbrook they at the moment of this trade and this contract pretty much everyone unanimously said what the hell are they doing they're getting a guy that's ball dominant when you want LeBron to have the ball. Right. This guy can't shoot, and he's going to yeah. clog everything up. And that's exactly what has happened. Right. Let's see if this they could did be lose a revival some, year. They lost some good young pieces. Yeah. There. That was a good Kuzma, deal for the Wizards. Uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope, maybe one or two other guys in that trade. Mm-hmm. You know, that that was just mind boggling to me. I, I know many Lakers fans probably wish they had that one back. Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, we didn't mention him, but Tobias Harris on this list either. You're not going to hear any slander about him from me. I like no, him. I mean, and I think Ben Simmons is about to have a huge comeback year. Yeah. That, that contract was based on him being an all-star and continuing to produce at that level. So I don't think it's that crazy, even though technically a bad contract. He could be He could be an all-star again, though. I mean, right. And then, I mean, but even if he's an all-star, it's a high contract. But yeah. Not if it were, I mean, sometimes when I'm thinking about the players that the Nets have just in three guys, yeah. how do they even have any money for the other guys? But they've somehow made it work, and if they can all get on the same page, the Nets could be nice. This is true. All right, so I this next one here, this is from Bleacher Report. <laughs> I don't know if this is true or a troll. Right. Maybe Either there way. should be a segment. Either true way, or funny. troll. Ooh, all right. That's kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> but this is supposedly a quote. From DeJounte Murray, uh, I'm tired of getting a taste of him. I want the whole load. DeJounte Murray on Paulo Bancaro. I have a feel. I can just, like, is YouTube going to gonna ping that up. and look at that and say, hey, man, you can't say that on your show right now or what? Because that, that's, a, that's a weird quote. Um, 
either way, it's funny, even if it's not true and somebody made this. They put the Bleacher Report logo on it, so it looks like it comes from them. I'm not sure if it did or not. But it's funny, and it was timely because, you know, they basically didn't play that long. It looked like they kind of squashed the beef, but they didn't really get to play that long in that game. So I could see how he still kind of wants there to be more things to talk about. And we'll talk a little bit about, about that game in a minute, which seems like a long time ago now, but because we record every two weeks, it, 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 it was actually a while ago. The one where the at the Pro-Am? Yeah, the crossover. Yeah, I, they, they, see, they did seem to have squashed it. I, I don't know. DeJounte Murray talked a lot of shit. To then it be squashed, him helping Paulo on the, off the court and just giving him kind of like a head dap. It felt like, like when that they may have talked behind the scenes, maybe, perhaps uh, to so he, to erase all the shit that he was talking at that game. They need to have talked behind the scenes. If they didn't, then beef. Well, on. I think he beef was blocked, on. so I don't know if they yeah. did, but. Uh, I think it could be one of those things, too, where, you know, there was always that kid in the neighborhood that would talk a bunch of trash at, at you. And then when you rode your bike up on him, he'd be like, oh, hey, man, how you doing? Yeah. And then the minute you get away from him, he'd be like, you're a bitch. <laughs> and it's like this could be one of those situations where he's like, uh, well, LeBron's in the house and a lot of people are here and they're videotaping and he's bigger than me. And yeah. hey, man, it's all good. It's all good, young blood. Yeah. And it's like, well, is it? Yeah. Or are you just going to talk shit again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see when those two teams get together. Uh, but yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's almost like a brotherly, you know, you're from the same area, you grow up with the same role models, going to the same places, playing the same people. Yeah. And yeah, there's probably a little bit of that camaraderie that, that will never really go away. So I'm cool with the beef being squashed if they are, we'll see. You think it's over? I don't want you it seem to be skeptical. over. I don't want it to be over, man. I want Hawks just beef just for the next few years. I would like that rivalry because I don't really like the Hawks. I don't really like Trey Young. I certainly now sure. don't like Dejounte sure. Murray. I just don't. I, we, I don't. We have a built-in dislike for Atlanta because of the in the they're in right, our they're division. In our so yeah, you can always division. dislike Atlanta. It's okay. Yeah, I'm with it. So right. bring on the beef. Uh, I'm no vegetarian, but I don't <laughs> think we need beef if we don't need to have it. I'd I'd like to see him beef with a player of a higher stature. That might yeah. stoke a little more in me, but it's a good starter feud for him. Well, he's like a wrestler that's just joined, okay. and he's going he's gonna to mop up on some mid-level guys before he gets those title shots. So, you know, I'm okay with it. All right, this is, this is a warm-up round for Paulo. Yeah. Well, well, how about this beef, Peach? Mm -hmm. um, at O-Town underscore is trying to create a beef with your favorite team, Peach. See that. He, See that. They, they listed the 2023 Eastern Conference Finals. Against your Milwaukee Bucks, your number one squad, the Orlando Magic. Right. With uh, Suggs, Kell, Wendell Carter Jr., Franz, and Paolo Bancaro as the starting five. I think this guy is reading the pinstripes on that jersey hanging behind you a little too much. Because I don't think it's quite our time to go. Uh, but uh, Joey responding to him down below obviously seems to think it's possible. Um, yeah. I... I don't think in my wildest dreams I could see that happening. I just I don't I don't think it's it's time for that. But that would be not this year, but next season. I could that's see in the next two much. seasons. Well, that's talking about twenty twenty three. We got twenty twenty two twenty three season now. Right. So the, this is the twenty two twenty three season, okay, and so the twenty three right. Eastern Conference Finals will be this season. Oh, that is so a it's too much. soon. Yeah. <laughs> I, our boy Joey is optimistic. He came to the meetup uh, before the. Draft when we met Joey, very optimistic dude, but right. maybe overreaching right now. But I love that energy that we're coming into the season with. Let's let's speak it into existence. Markel did, yeah. You know? I mean, four seed. If we're four seed, we're gonna play the fifth seed. Could be the Hawks. We destroy them, move on, beat somebody else, and then we're here. We are careful. You might need to put on your little red glasses if you keep talking like that. <laughs> Kyle's conspiracy <laughs> theory is coming at you. Oh no, that's another segment. <laughs> All right, so um, from the Bucks to some Bulls news in a way, mm. some sad news for you Ginger Association card holders out there. This is from I, at Shy Sports Updates that the Chicago Bulls G League affiliate Windy City Bulls have acquired former Orlando Magic guard Hassani Gravit mm. in a three-team trade. And, and Jenny at JBORL11 mm. – is kind of expressing my sentiments and maybe some of your sentiments out there. Sure. She said, good for him, but seriously going to miss best things so since in Lakeland, Orlando, will always be a part of the Magic fam. 
Yeah, you know what, Bulls? We've uh, fleeced you pretty good, and we've yeah. talked about it a lot on the show, but uh, you took Asani Gravit, and that's kind of a We're that's a little dig back. It's a little, little yeah. dig back, back for them. Uh, I immediately, when I saw this, sent you a text with it. had to check it. had to check and see if you were okay, Kay. Thank you. On the spot, because yeah. I knew this was a thing that really affected you, much as you checked in with me when Robin Lopez was gone. <sighs> But, uh, you know, we move forward. Last year was a weird year, and he got to play, and a lot of guys got to play. And uh, well, we, we wish him well. Yeah, it's, it's just really sad to see him go. I know we picked up another guard we signed recently this year. Yep. For, his name is escaping me. Well, I'll bring him up if you don't know his name. <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't have, all right? I lost a little bit of my authority, perhaps. Right, but he's too emotional about the loss of Hassani. I'm just so sad about Hassani. I really wish we would have signed him, you know, brought him up. We needed more We need more ball handling, I think, on the squad, just in general. Outside oh, yeah. of Markel sure. and Cole, we're kind of lacking a little bit. We want um, Jalen to develop into that, but right, yeah. he hasn't yet. Sure. But and I'm I okay loved what Hassani Gravit gave us. Right. Last year coming up, man. I agree. The guy could shoot. The guy could pass. A little razzle-dazzle. And the red fro was just luscious, baby. He had a little bit of a veteran feel to him yeah. that like our team just didn't really have yeah. the last couple of years, relying pretty heavily on Gary Harris or or uh, T. Ross for that. Right. But you know, if their mid- minutes were sparing or one of them was nicked up, like we didn't really have a ton of that. And Robin Lopez was laying on the floor. So, <laughs> but for some reason, he had like a veteran feel to him. Like he seemed really comfortable at NBA games, like just doing his thing. And right. it, would, it was fun to watch. But he'll still be around. We'll get to see him at some point. Windy City Bills, good luck, Hassani. Farewell, friend. All the best. Maybe we can see him when the Windy City Bulls come and play the Westchester Knicks in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I would go to that. Yeah. That'd be sick. <laughs> All right, the last one. Is from so it wouldn't be a social media roundup without a post from Jeff Weltgod. Mm, no. And this is combining two of your favorite things, Peach. So I'll let you explain it. Oh, man. All right. Well, unfortunately, what's happened here is that Shawn Michaels, who's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, has been labeled Chet Holmgren in this. So Ooh. I apologize for that. But for the sake of the meme, he is Chet Holmgren, and he says to Stone Cold Steve Austin, who is Sam Presti, the doctor said it's only a month. I can play by Thanksgiving, Mr. Presti. And then, of course, Stone Cold... Sam responds Presti. with, yeah. or yeah, Sam, Sam Presti, Presti yeah. he's, he's responding with his famous salute yeah. uh, of the bird. Yeah. So he's basically saying, no, nope, no playing for you. And apparently the Oklahoma City Thunder are the first in the tankathon <laughs> for the season already. Uh, it's one of those deals where, I got to tell you, it was a weird feeling when it was announced he wasn't playing for the year. A lot of people dropped into my DMs, were talking to me about it. It was like I felt like I had to make a statement about it. And, so, and so I, now be- I did. Yeah. I made a statement on on Twitter. Obviously, it's it's sad to you know you don't really want to see anyone get injured. That's not what we're here for. Mm-hmm. I'd rather see him in games, getting his shots blocked, right. and you yeah. know throwing up bricks from the outside and just stinking it up. And now we have to wait another year for that, which stinks. But as a Magic fan, we've gotten used to kind of waiting on a year and oh, we got to wait for this and we got to wait for that. And if you remember correctly. There was a gentleman on this show mm. who usually wears a hat mm. who told you he didn't want that for us, mm. which they are now experiencing because they drafted Chet Holmgren. And here's the thing, man. Toilet paper is a really, really important thing to have. Is it not? It is. Oh, If you asked me to get the finest sheet of paper in this house right now, I would go yeah. grab a, a sheet of the toilet paper you have. It's good stuff. It's downy. It's plugged. And it, it's very useful. Mm. But much like toilet paper, soft is going to soft. And I'm sorry that he got hurt, but I'm also not surprised. I hope he comes back and can play at whatever level he thought he was going to be, uh, the NBA's best player. But I'm still, like, jokingly wanted to see him try to attempt to do it. So I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed that we don't get to see him go toe-to-toe versus Paulo for the Rookie of the Year and stuff like that. I, I really am disappointed, truly. Yeah. And I hope that he comes back. And I, I really do think he could come back this season. And I think it's kind of weak that the Thunder are already just – Shutting it down for the whole season. This kid's worked his whole life. He wants to play in the NBA. If he was healthy at the end of the year, let him get in a little bit. Let him get yeah. some run. But teams are so quick to shut it down now. It's it's disheartening to think that the Thunder and some of the players they have, like a Theo Maladon, who I like, and yeah. uh, SGA, yeah. that they're gonna have to like potentially go through another tank gear. And the fans, man, I just yeah, my it's tough. If, if it's I, tough. I if I feel anything, it's definitely just empathy for the OKC fans. Sure, sure. 
we we feel your pain yeah, out there. We've, been there. we've been there the last couple of years. It's not easy, especially when you see one of your main pieces going down at the beginning of the year, knowing that you have right. a whole season to go through. Sure. Which probably isn't going to yield many victories. Right. You're again in the lotto sweepstakes and hoping and praying for a top draft pick. Yeah, after the preseason, they had a lot of hype. I think they were yeah. coming out of it feeling good. Oh, Getty's looking good. Holmgren's looking good. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to put those together with our other guys and, and be able to compete this year and you know maybe have an outside shot for the plan, depending on how, how optimistic they want to be. But now it's uh, not looking that way, but maybe that'll motivate the guys that are still there to play at a higher level. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I feel sympathy for those fans. But I don't feel any sympathy for Chet Holmgren. None. Not at all. He says none. Okay. Not at all. All right. None at I, all. I, there, I'm hearing folks come out and say, oh, man, such a bad break for the kid. No. This is beautiful poetic justice. Okay. What did Chet say? Oh, who's the best player in the league? As you said, Peach, he had many ways he could have answered that. He could have answered it honestly with the players, players that he does look up to, probably like a Kevin Durant or a player like that. Or he could have said one of his best buds, Jalen Suggs. That's my favorite player in the NBA. Sure, sure. But instead he said, I'm the best player in six months in the NBA. And guess what happened? He went up against someone who is arguably the best player in the NBA in LeBron James, and he immediately gets hurt. What better poetic justice is there? For someone coming in with that cocky of an attitude, I feel no sympathy for the kid. Hmm. He is a kid. No, you know, sympathy. he's a kid. I feel no sympathy okay. for him. All right. He's already made more money in right now than I'm gonna make in my entire life. He's good. Right. And I understand. Okay. I understand the idea of money doesn't make happiness, and he's maybe struggling me with mental health. I, I don't. I don't. Right. That's an important point. But it's neither here nor there. He's already achieved what is many people's dream to be drafted, to play in the NBA. He will play in the NBA. Mm. You know, use this as a learning lesson, Chet. If, if money can't buy you happiness, you're doing it wrong, by the way, <laughs> for anyone who has money. Uh, <laughs> I never understand that comparison at oh all. I'm just God. like, that nothing would solve everything. I don't nothing <laughs> makes me happier than traveling, having good food, good booze. Come on. give me, Let me do that all the time. I'll be happy as a clam. Well, I mean, I, happy as an alien I'm fish. not going to say I shed a tear. Yeah. But I, I do feel bad that he doesn't get a chance to get on the court and play. It's a freak accident. But these things happen. That yeah. is part of life. It happened to Gary Harris. We're going to talk about that in a minute. It, it just is part of the game. It's not just part of the game. It's part of life. You know what I mean? That play was not really that aggressive. No. You could have legitimately done that walking down the stairs. Yeah. So, like, but, again, eh, I'm not going to say those words you want me to say now. It's still too early. There's many years of his career ahead. I know you want me to say it. I'm not going to do it. Does it rhyme with rust? No, it didn't. <laughs> it's, a ter it's a phrase. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but I'm not going to say it. But it does illustrate the point of everyone who is like, well, his frame, and well, you can't always use his frame as an excuse. Yes, you can, because the frame was weak. And we knew it, and we saw it, and we didn't want to buy that painting. <laughs> so we didn't. <laughs> That's it. I mean... Yeah. I still hope he comes back, and I'm not trying to talk trash on his injury, but from a standpoint of we had to choose between these two products, which product had a better frame? You listen to Doris Burke, she tells you all about it. Oh, yeah. So, hey, we chose a frame that was more sturdy. And Karma's a bitch, Chad. But the same thing could happen to him as well, because yeah. we're all human beings. This is true. And this it's part of life, so... This is true. Maybe, oh, crap, maybe me talking junk is putting out in the universe, then karma's going to come get me. No, 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 That's not going to happen. I'm sorry, Chet. Well, if you get a Liz Frank, you can still hobble your ass into work, so yeah. it's a little different for you. <laughs> no, but I was talking about a magic player. That's what I was, Oh, that's the karma that oh, I we lost want. Gary Harris since this That's happened. true. All right, let's go to Phil and Blake. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for everything on, on the social media roundup. If you'd like us to feature something that you think is hilarious or interesting, mm -hmm. Make it easier for us, at court underscore cousins on Twitter and Instagram. We'd greatly appreciate it, and maybe it'll get featured on the show. And the best one we get that we will feature on next week's show, we'll get one of those prize packs we talked about. There it is. Yeah, there let's it go. Is. Help us help you. So add us, at court underscore cousins. Send us some magic news, and you'll be entered to win a prize pack. Cool. All right, moving on to fill in the blank. I'm going to go a little out of order here, Peach. Yep, and this fine. segment is tried and true. You get it, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to provide a statement, mm -hmm. but there's going to be a word or a phrase missing, and we need to fill in the blank. Yeah, it's like Mad Libs, but it's not as fun. Nah. So we were just talking about injuries. Mm -hmm. 
And unfortunately, we in the Orlando Magic have witnessed yet another injury, something that has become almost like drinking water for us, sadly, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to Gary Harris, who is going to be out for we don't know who long, how long because, of course, our team doesn't tell us anything and probably won't ever tell us anything with uh, a meniscus tear in the left knee. So here's the film <laughs> of the blank, Fish. The player most likely to benefit from extra time with Gary Harris out is blank. I mean, it's, if it's not Raymond James Hampton, I don't know if that's what it stands for. Is that I'm just what I was about to say? Really? But if it's not RJ Hampton, I don't know who it is. Uh, it, it just it screams for him to be that guy. And last year when we saw him off ball, when he could s- spot up, he was one of our better three-point shooters. That's what Gary does, and also being defensive. So RJ is going to need to step up his D if he wants to get more of those minutes. Otherwise, they could go to someone else. And it really just might go to the guys that are already existing kind of in our starting lineup who are going to play more. Because you had some lineups, I think, where you had Gary Harris starting, um, or at least being first off the bench, perhaps. No, I I want him starting. And now that's going to lean more time for Suggs, Cole, um, to figure out what they're going to do, and maybe more time for Fultz as well in the guard positions just rolling around. But I feel like it opens up a hole for RJ Hampton to try to bust through. And this is a big year for him because I think it's kind of, he's one of the players on our team that it's like, you know, yeah, he obviously fits in well and gets in well with who our team is, but that's a roster spot that we could fill with, you know, a potential all-star or an all-star if we want to get to the finals level within like, you know, three or four years, which is something I think we aspire to do. So it's no knock on RJ, but this is, this is time to put up, put up or shut up. I think for him, I, I, do you think anybody other than, than him? Or? Well, I, I honestly, truthfully, I was going to say RJ as well. Yep. Uh, it's definitely a make or break year, but I'll go a little different way. I'll say the player most likely to benefit from the extra time with Gary Harris out is my boy Devin Cannon. Devin Cannon. I'm going to keep banging that drum, ladies and gentlemen. We lose Gary Harris, one of our best shooters, especially from that corner. Man, sure, it sure, was going sure. in. Devin Kennedy is a guy that was fr- is fringe on this team. Mm-hmm. Like w- for sure. It's his ca- contract isn't guaranteed. We don't know if he's even going to be on the squad with Gary Harris going down. Right. He could now be on the squad and see some of those rotational minutes where before he, you know, he wasn't probably going to see much court. Mm. Now, he has an opportunity to get in there and show what he can do, which I think is a lot. Remember ladies and gentlemen, this guy was the the G League Finals MVP. Right. He was one of the best shooters in the G League period. Yep. Sustained for multiple years. He's shooting plus 40 40s percent from beyond the arc. Sure. That it, the line doesn't move last time I checked in the G League and the NBA. It's the same distance, Peach. Same. So if he can do it there, there's a chance that he can do it in the NBA. We saw some of it last year when he came up. The guy has a, a sweet stroke and even sweeter dance moves. I really think, you know, Gary Harris, Gary Harris's unfortunate injury could be that little crack in the door to let Devin come in, show what he can do, and maybe earn some rotational minutes when eventually this guard rotation is going to have to be consolidated. Like you said, it's make or break for RJ. Mm. If he doesn't show something, he could be on the way out. We've been talking about Terrence Ross being traded for the past two years. Right. So something's going to happen in this guard rotation. Right. And maybe Devin Kennedy, because he's affordable, will be able to stay on the end of the bench and, and see some time in the NBA. That's a good point. I, my, my dark horse here would have been Caleb Houston. Okay. Because I feel like what we're losing a lot with Gary is one of our better defensive players. And I think yep. Caleb is pretty good on D. So he could get minutes based on being a defensive stopper. But we'll see. I mean, I haven't seen enough of him to know if he's going to jump into the role or not. So the safe bet would be RJ. But if I had to put some money on a long shot, as I know you sometimes like to do if you're hedging a bet, (laughs) 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 then I'd go with Caleb Houston. Okay. All right. I see that. Hey, Peach, we got our first sponsor, man, Muscle Tech. Muscle Tech? Yeah. That, That sounds like a college football powerhouse. Go Tech! Well, not quite, Peach. They do powerhouse these muscles, baby. Oh. Yeah. Muscle Tech, it's a nutrition company. You know, they're trying to fuel you for all your needs, whatever that is. You Mm. know, proteins, whey powders, creatine, things like that, vitamins, you know. Oh. So they're the ones with the tickets to the gun show. 
Oh yeah, baby. Muscle tech. Are we in a real commercial right now? I think so. Look out. We made it. <laughs> so seriously, people, we have our first sponsor. Uh, if you're at all into fitness, active lifestyle, go to Muscle Tech. Use the link in our description of the episode, and we'll get a little kickback. So if you're already doing it, help out the show. All right, so let's move on. The next two fill-in-the-blanks are going to be Orlando Magic Player History theme from our boy Jay at ORL Magic Player History. Yep. And he's been doing all offseason – Giving us that magic content that we need. Sure, we yeah, we've been talking about it all all off season. Yep, um, it's definitely some good content. Everybody gets to vote. Right, I've been sticking up for the old guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun time. But it's coming down to the finals now of, right. of some of these, and uh, we thought it'd be a good opportunity to fill in the blank. Let's fill in the blank with who we think it is. <laughs> all right, so the power forwards. Yep, um, the top. So the final four for power forwards was Horace Grant, Terry Catledge. Bo Outlaw and Richard Lewis. Sure. Peach. Yep. The number one Orlando Magic power forward is blank. I want to say Richard Lewis, but Richard Lewis start was basically one of the first stretch fours. Yes. This guy was one of the best three-point shooters in the league, and that was not something power forwards were doing. But he could also go in and rebound and play inside, yes. which was kind of incredible. It probably should be him, and I think you think I'm going to say Terry Catledge because I'm going to yeah, go with, with that young kid's heart, yeah, yeah. but no, I'm not doing that either. I'm going with Horace Grant because yeah. Horace Grant was a great player before, and he was also a great player when he came to our team, and he kind of took a team that was young that was too soon for mm -hmm. them to be going places, and he made them legit. He gave them some veteran leadership and something on the court that went a little deeper than the stats may have shown. So for me, it's Horace Grant. Because I think he was a legendary player, maybe before he even came to us. But then he really kind of made us a team that people took had to take seriously for a while and changed the culture of a team that was back in a spot where we are now. He's the kind of guy I'd like to see come in next year when we have an offseason, bring in a guy like that that can help propel us to that next level so that when people say, why not us, why not now, he's that guy saying you're all good, young, talented players. I've done it before. Let's go do it. Uh, I, I got one with Horace Grant. Who do you think? You stole my argument, Pete. Ah, I didn't know. <laughs> you stole my argument, except I'm saying Richard Lewis. Okay. And it is interesting how these two players, two power forwards from different eras of Orlando Magic basketball really do have such a similar narrative. You know, they were the missing piece yep. that – pushed us over the edge into championship contention. Mm -hmm. Bringing over Richard Lewis, a guy that, man, he, he was dynamic as a player. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of times when we saw him on the Magic, he was spotting up for threes because we had other guys, Turkaloo, Jameer, handling the rock more. But remember, Jameer, I mean, I'm sorry, Richard Lewis could take people off the dribble. Yep. He was really silky. When he would so get good. it in the post, he would face up on people. So, like, you know, drawing fouls, he was really good at that. Yep. Uh, he, I mean, he, he showed up when it mattered in the finals, even though it yep. didn't push us over. He had that, like, 34-point game. Yep. I mean, this was he was a big-time player in big-time moments. Sure. It didn't shy away. I liked him also because he was those types of guys that I – look up to and admire in terms of speak, speak quietly and carry a big stick. Exactly. He yeah. just handled Agreed. his business, he was a great player, and, and let his play do the talking. Right. And I just respect humans like that. Yeah, I mean, he was, some of his better years came with the Sonics as well yep. before he got there. Got, yeah. By the way, imagine him on that young Oklahoma City Thunder team that went to the finals. Yeah. If he'd have been there still, that could, he could have been a difference maker. But yeah, he was almost a little too laid back. Like, he didn't get up in people's kit. He wasn't like doing serial commercials and like people he wasn't a household name, you know, but he definitely had that star power, but like a quiet star. So like I think he doesn't get the run as being like some all time great. But man, his his bag was full. Yeah. And, and I, I put him over Horace just because of another point that you mentioned, again stealing all my points over there, Peach. Mm -hmm. The fact that that Orlando Magic team was really on the forefront of what has become the modern NBA, the stretch four. Sure. He was kind of 
one of the first right. of those guys. We had another guy, Ryan Anderson, who was in yep. this as well. Didn't make it as far in the poll. Right. But those ilk guys, those six nine, six ten shooters, right. who could punish you outside, but he could also come off the dribble. Right. So. That's that that whole Orlando team really started that whole. Yeah. We got one guy inside rebounding, and he can mm-hmm. score in there when he wants. And if you decide to try to shut him down, he'll throw it out to the open three point shooter. <laughs> and, and everybody of, else. Anyone else. <laughs> oh. And now we're, our squad these days, like, we're just dying for shooting. We need. Right. And that's why Devin Cannon. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go back. Don't, Don't go back. back. By the way, Holy I think boy. I've got a new moniker. I'm going to call okay. it the Point Stealer. I'm thinking about it. Okay. All right, that's good for you. We'll see. We could see. We could put on a shirt or something. It might work. Hmm. Hmm. Indeed. Okay, speaking let's of talk shooting, shooting guards. Yeah, yeah, needing some shooting. Yep. Uh, let's go to shooting guards. Okay. So the final four from Magic Play history for shooting guards, and this is in contention a little bit, Peach, is hmm. Nick Anderson, Terrence Ross, Evan Fournier, and J.J. Redick. Who do you have as your top Orlando Magic Shooting guard. This one. <clears throat> yeah, I already had this rant with you over dinner the yeah, other day, but I'm going to say it again. It's really disappointing when you look at these four names and decide these are your four best shooting guards of all time. To be honest, when the whole thing started, I assumed Tracy McGrady would be a shooting guard, but he put him in the small forward category. I, I understand it's hard to figure out exactly where players play when they're a little bit of a hybrid. So he, Jay had a tough thing to do, and he did what he had to do. Yeah. But when you see Terrence Ross and Evan Fournier and J.J. Redick in your top four, for your franchise, it's not good. Now, we're a young franchise, so that's the only thing that like gives me a little bit of like, all right, all right, we don't have a super long history to go by. But like those three guys should not be in our top four, so I'm obviously going Nick Anderson here all the way, no question about it. I'm, sure you didn't, I'm surprised you didn't you know, do like a curveball and throw us like a Reggie Theus or something. Reggie Theus only played for us one season, even yeah. though it was good. So he, he really, to me, didn't qualify. This is one of those things where, you know, you're putting it out there to the public, so everybody's voting. So you never know. Things are yeah. going all out of, out of sorts. In fact, I'm going to be honest with you all right now. The point guards, they were coming out, the final. It was Penny, it was Penny and, and Skiles, I think, in the, in the semis. Yeah. I voted for Skiles. Penny already had it. Yeah. All right? He was winning big Defend time. Yourself, it was like 96% to 4%. But I used our two accounts to give some love to Scott Skiles because I didn't want him to have a zero, and I don't. I, and I'm not mad about it because I know Penny was better. But that's what happens when you vote. Sometimes <laughs> things get weird names. You know, if you if you leave things up to the public and you let them vote, sometimes they'll just name something Schooly McSchoolface, and then it's like there it is. <laughs> yeah, Jay had some fun with you. He trolled you with this little graphic here, uh, hmm. spreading the Penny hate piece. You should be ashamed of yourself. I would never say any disparaging words about Penny. Uh, it was more about giving a little love to Scott Skiles. You are a lover, not a hater. Yeah, I thought T-Mac was a, was a two-guard, or honestly, if we're being real, the amount that he handled the ball. Could have been a one. Yeah, he, yeah he's really played point <laughs> guard on that team right. uh, almost as much. You know, other, other uh, two guards that are – Included in Ranker's top shooting guards of our time, they have Vince Carter as a two guard as well. Sure, Victor Oladipo in there. Absolutely, yeah. Mike Miller, right? Would have been something to think about. Not for the top four. Jason Richardson. No, nope. those guys are all ahead <laughs> of Terrence Ross. But you know right. who I really am going to throw a curveball and put in this? Not in this top four. Okay. Aaron Aflalo. Man. Aaron what? Aflalo, man. <laughs> I was such an aflower. I just, I love that guy's game. He was silky smooth. He had this beautiful, like, shimmy turnaround jumper on the baseline, and it was going in. He just, that was my only source of pleasure with that team. And I'm, I'm going to put Aaron. Your only source Aaron of pleasure was calling yourself an aflower, yeah. which is why well, you I mentioned it. But I appreciate that. that. I, I thought get that it. was, like, cool. So, <laughs> I, you know. I thought it up, and I'm like, no, I'm but gonna... honestly, none, nobody on that list of names jumps off to the yeah. average NBA fan. Of course, as I'm like picking... being somebody who matters. <laughs> I'm gonna pick Nick Anderson, of course, yeah. but like, fair. I just wanted to kind of be contrarian, and and not, I didn't really like my other options: Terrence Ross, yeah. JJ Redick. I don't Evan like Fournier. Fournier either, but man, Redick in the final. Come on, people. <laughs> I mean, after JJ he Redick us as fans. He too. didn't even average ten points a game for us. Like he just not. He was a non. He was a non-factor, non-factor for the first yeah. like three years of his career. He didn't get good until after he left us. Uh, he was pretty good at that no, maybe last at the year tail or two. End. Yeah. But then all he had to do. That's when we already had all the other pieces, and all he needed to do was just sit around the arc and shoot threes. 
which is, you know, that became his role. So that's good for him. But it was fun. It was a fun thing for Jay to do at Magic yep. Player History because it got debate going. It gave us some material for the show, which we love. <laughs> so thanks for doing it, Jay. And thanks for everybody for voting in that. I think it was kind of fun. It got a lot of people talking in the comments and stuff, too. Uh, I would always write stuff and then it'd be like, nah, I don't need to start this debate. So, but it's fun. Yeah. It gives you something to do in the off season. Yeah. Well done. It'll be interesting to see what he does next summer. <laughs> start planning now. <laughs> All right, last fill in the blank. This is an NBA fill in the blank. Mm. Blank is the best off-season addition by any team. I've been sitting on this one for a little bit. I've had a thought about it. I know there's still some guys that could move here within the next few weeks before training sure. camp starts. Sure, sure. So it could change. But I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Lakers getting Pat Beverly. Oh, wow. But I'm doing it with this. Okay. This is either going to be the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. And then for all of us who are not Laker fans, also the best thing ever. Because <laughs> <laughs> Pat Bev is definitely one of those guys that you hate him if he's not on your team. Absolutely. But if he's on your team and he's a dog for you, he Love fights yep. and he gets other players on the team to fight that hard too. And I think that's what that Lakers team needed. Definitely. So I'm excited to see if he can bring that mentality to these guys. Now the problem is, if they don't get on his level, it's going to be a scene. Yeah. <laughs> but if they do, <laughs> they're they're a finals contender. Like yeah. they have a lot of good names, a lot of guys that can fill it up. If they're healthy, they've got you know, I know LeBron's late in the long in the tooth, yeah. but he's still a great player. Anthony Davis, if he's healthy, is a great player. Mm -hmm. Russell Westbrook's a walking triple double, mm -hmm. and then you've got one of the be best defenders in the game, and yeah. Pat Bev. I, and they didn't really have to give up that much to get them either, so it's a pretty good steal for the Lakers, who couldn't add or do much this off season, but this was one thing they can do, and I. I love the move. Yeah, it's it, they're, they're I, shoving I all them. their chips in and saying, "Yeah, this is either going to work or we're going home." <laughs> well, I, it, it's interesting you bring up that move because who did they trade to get that Stanley Johnson and a guy that Magic Twitter Magic community was in a uproar about last year, Taylor Horton Tucker, mm -hmm. and trying to maybe trade Terrence Ross to get Tht and right. oh man, he had that one crazy preseason game and this guy could be amazing. He mm -hmm. was a non-factor last year. Sure. It just shows you that preseason Chet Holmgren doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Right, buddy? I feel like he was probably hurt, but I, I don't know. I just think – I'm not sure if he was supposed to be really good or not, but for a while they wouldn't move him at all. He was right. almost no, like an untradeable was, this piece. This is a piece, yeah. And then this is what they trade? Yeah. Okay, uh, sure. Right. Yeah, he probably could have done less, but all right. All right, so – what do you, Well, who do you think? All right, I'm torn. I'm torn between two. Okay. So – just throw them both out there. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. So first, I'm gonna say the Celtics, and Malcolm Brogdon. And I know you're gonna hate it. I know you're gonna hate it. But look, they get Malcolm Brogdon right now. This isn't hate. This is confused. Well, you shouldn't. But be I'm confused. here listening. I'm you should waiting, not be confused. This is a guy for that you can to convince get you, me otherwise. This guy that can get you 20 points per game, potentially. He's a great scorer, great ball handler, really patient, really steady guy, great shooter from beyond the arc. Yeah, yeah. And they give up Daniel Thice, who was barely rotational for them, Aaron Neesmith, who just hasn't popped. He was Cole Anthony's year, selected right sure, before Cole sure. Anthony. Yep. Malik Fitz, Juwan Morgan, Nick Stauskas, and a 2023 first-round pick. So essentially they gave up a 2023 first-round pick, which for the Celtics is not going to be much of anything, late first-round pick. Who knows what you can get there? So, honestly, that's that's what I would go with. The other thing that I would go with that's kind of flown under the radar because it happened way long ago, I would say the Trailblazers getting Jeremy Grant. Okay, yeah, that's I mean, a good he, one. He's kind of like an all-star-ish -e right. type of cusp. player. Yeah, yeah, cusp player. And, you know, they, just, they gave up one first-round pick and two second-round picks. Yeah. And the first-round pick they gave up is the Milwaukee Bucks one that they had. Right, right. So that's, again, no, that a, a very move, yeah. low first-round pick and a couple seconds for it's a, a guy one. that you can plug in next to Damian Lillard and provide some scoring punch. I, I think that was a really nice and quiet move early. Before, that's a good call. That's before good Rudy call. Like Gobert that. blew up the whole freaking trade market. Yeah, and in a way that doesn't seem correct to me. Right? I mean, that's what's crazy about this offseason. We had guys like Jeremy Grant going for one late first-round pick in right. a couple seconds. We have DeJounte Murray, who— I'd rather we, have Jeremy Grant than Rudy Gobert. 
Yeah, I mean, like for you know, if I'm looking at a franchise for the next five years, maybe well, not, yeah, maybe not Grace, next younger, year, yeah, but sure. like, right, I'm building a franchise here. What? Even even Dejounte Murray going to the Hawks, I, they gave up two first round picks, a pick swap. Oh, they gave up three first round picks and a pick swap. That's, that's way too much. No, but those are crappy picks, though. I know, but still, that's a lot. Yeah, you I guess get, that you is can more. get good players at the end of the first round. Yeah, or turn them around to other good stuff, as we're seeing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think Malcolm Brogdon is is he's a nice player, but I don't think he makes the Celtics that much better. All right, so then but, my film but, like is Jeremy Grant. Okay, but but you're right for yeah. for the players that, the things they gave away. They gave up nothing. For what them. the hell? Right. Why not? Exactly. It's a good deal. Yes, it's a good deal. Yes. But the blank says best offseason edition. <laughs> I'll go with Jeremy Not the best Grant. deal. Jeremy but yeah, Grant, but Jeremy yeah. Grant is Jeremy nice. Grant. I like that. I'll put my stamp of approval on it. Give me, give me the gavel. I'll okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're now joined by some very special guests, Peach. None other than Court Cousins Germany. Maybe this is why we had to be court underscore cousins for all of our. These are the guys, yeah. These must be the guys. These are the guys, and and wouldn't you know it, they're big Magic fans, of course. And, and we're welcoming them onto the show. So why don't you tell us, introduce yourselves to our audience, and, and tell us how you got into basketball. Well, it is very big honor to be on this show. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Gunther, yeah, and this is my brother Uwe Bleb, named after, of course, the great Uwe Bleb. Uh, we come from very big basketball family. Uh, we are actually the cousins of Moritz and Franz. This is why we are called the court cousins, <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! That, Whoa! I didn't realize that you guys are Legit really cousins. are court cousins, all right, all right. and so way. so are you guys Wagner's as well, or? Well, Wagner is not our last name. We are on the mother's side. I believe you have seen her interviewed on the court side. Uh, yes, a couple of times. Yes, Aunt Beate is very hot. Uwe, this is our aunt. She is hot. Agreed, agreed. I thought she was a good-looking lady when we saw her interview interviewed uh, in the fan. I was kind of amazed that she had two kids. The ages of Moritz and, and Franz. She looks good for age. Congratulations. Yeah. So um, we've never been in Germany. We'd love to go. Hopefully sometime soon. Maybe maybe you can fly us out there. But Sounds like a good time. Yeah. For those of us who haven't been, what are some of the best things about Germany? Oh, well, there are so many amazing things here in Deutschland. It is tough to say just a few, but I don't know. Have you ever heard of Christmas? Yeah, well, we invented the Christmas tree. Just a little thing like that, okay? And uh, we have over a thousand types of sausages. Yeah? And, of course, the beers at Oktoberfest, they are served in liters. So tighten your liter hose and ladies. Your old basket is coming. Ooh, man, I got to tell you. Don't believe all you've heard about Germany, my guy. Christmas, sausages, mm-hmm. and beer. Ooh. These are a few of my favorite things. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so we brought you all in because you're the experts on Eurobasket. Hmm. What are your thoughts? Do you, do you think Germany can win this thing? Oh, well, we are very excited for the start of Eurobasket. We are hosting, of course, as you know, in the home of Deutschland. We are ready for a victory, but... In truth, it is going to be very hard, Uwe, for us to advance. We are in the toughest group, as you know. We are in Group B, and there we have Slovenia with Luka. Luka is bitch. He, no, oh, okay. Well, uh, Uwe is confident. We have France, which I know. We have uh, Evan Fournier, and, and we do like Evan. He has soft spot and heart now. He's bigger, bitch. <laughs> oh, and we also have Lithuania with Demontis Sabonis. And, of course... Magic great Ignas Brozdekas. I so, like Iggy. I- Iggy good. Iggy is very good. But this will be a very tough test for us to get out of group phase. It was such a big blow to see Moritz go down. He is the anchor of the squad. Yes, Uwe. Uwe cried that day. very sad, yes. Yes. I ate many sausages. <laughs> many sausages and brats. All right. Thanks for the analysis. Not sure that Evan Fournier hate was necessary, but uh, to each their own. So, we've read some facts on Urban Dictionary about your cousin, I get your cousin, Franz Wagner. Mm. Could you tell us, uh, what's your favorite story of Franz? Yes, tell us about the legend. <laughs> yes, Franz is the wonder kid, as you all know. He is just so miraculous. The next Dirk Nowitzki, perhaps, I, uh, dare I say? Oh, <laughs> 
better. Oh yeah. I I mean it's he is just an amazing boy. One time, one time Franz hours and hours in the gymnasium just shooting and shooting and playing and playing. He comes out dripping in sweat. On the way home, he sees a burning building. It turns out it's a burning orphanage. Franz, without thinking of his safety, rushes in, saves all the orphans and the nuns, comes out all the children in his arms, when at the same moment, from the zoo, a lion has escaped, and Franz punches the lion in the face, knocks him out, and he makes pancakes for everybody. All the children are very happy with this. I had some of the pancakes. They were good. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. That's a whole other aspect of Franz that I didn't know, but uh, I believe it. It's probably a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, guys, thanks so much for taking the time. We know you've got a busy media schedule. Really appreciate having you on, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Well, Kyle, Jason, thank you so much for having us on the show. It is great honor. Go Magic, and go Deutschland in Eurobasket. Mm, indeed. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I think that's Jason line. He might get upset. Yeah, we were first course cousins. Oh, this is true. <laughs> Peace. Well, that was a great time having uh, Gunter and Uwe on. He punched a lion? I'm yeah. sorry. I need... Do we get timeouts on this show? Because I no. need one. <laughs> this is going to be, be, be a 20. I... The Wonder Kid, you know? We just keep learning more and more about Moritz and Franz. Amazing. He gives so much. And he yeah. cooks pancakes. Yeah. Unbelievable. I bet, and he probably learned it from his hot mom. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say anything. She follows us on Instagram now, Peace. you got to be careful. <laughs> Peach over here just shooting all the shots <laughs> Stick around for our large ending Ladies and gentlemen But before we do We again have to shout out Our second cousins and our all stars Real ones, Magic Player History Al, Bernie Piche, Matthew Bell Dan Young, Gloria and Damien Yadi, Connor and the Polish Wonder We've got some goals over on the Patreon If you can Just give five every month Buy us a beer. That helps us to re the, reach those goals, which really just comes back to you. We're just trying to build a better show, a better content for you all out there. Mm. Please uh, join the conversation at court underscore cousins, Instagram and Twitter. Reach out. Send us uh, anything you think is show worthy. Yeah, and check the new website coming soon. Uh, some fun stuff there. All of our links as usual. But the new thing big is the shop. Check out the stuff there. Uh, we, we get a small portion of the stuff, not a, yeah. not a lot. We yeah. get a little bit back. It's mostly just to try to get the name out there, get our face on stuff. I'm sure we're gonna we're sure we're gonna buy some stuff ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> we got some sample stuff already, of course. Yeah. So thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. You really helped this show happen. All right. Peach, think, we're going in. I could go for a large ending. We're going into the large ending right now. All right, let's make it a large. Are you ready? Cue the music. Peter starting us off. All right, I got all the Star Wars pop fest going on behind me today. I know you're a big fan. What is your favorite movie or show from the Star Wars realm? There's so many, so many to choose from. Oh man, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little obscure. I'm not gonna put. I'm gonna put away the classics. Uh, Empire Strikes Back is definitely the best, but I'm gonna go with Rogue One. Ooh, all right. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you're going to get a lot of hate for that. All right. The hunt is on for a couple that engaged in sex acts at an Oakland A's game, mm. Peach. Should they be disciplined or lauded? Well, we're going to all go ahead and, and laud them yeah. because we're, we're all big fans of this. But they should actually be disciplined. Yeah, It's, yeah, it's kind of gross. But, there's, but there's, they, were, they were isolated. It's a family event. They were isolated, to be fair. Mm, Very top. It's more cool when it happens at a hockey game. I think the degree of difficulty is up. And we've seen that happen as well. All right, I'm going to switch hats again. Okay. We're on the third half of the show. Yeah. If you're, for those of you that had the 2.5, it was over today. <laughs> uh, the NFL kicks off next week. Opening night, Super Bowl champ, the Rams, taking on the Buffalo Bills. Who's going to circle the wagons? Let's ride, Bills. Oh, is that your other team? That's the other team. <laughs> okay. I'm going to root for you for the Bills. It's my cousin's favorite team. Let's go, Bills. Let's go, Buffalo. Serena won her first round matchup of the U.S. Open, Peach. Mm -hmm. Will she have a storybook ending to an amazing career? Whether she wins or not, it's a storybook ending. Serena has been a fantastic person to represent the sport of tennis and all of women's sports. Congratulations, Serena. Great career. Yes, Queen. So we just had our one-year anniversary. What did you get me? <laughs> I didn't get you anything yet, Peach. Oh, lame. Here are your cards. <laughs> He always makes me look like such an asshole. 
Wow. I love you, Peach. You're amazing. You could have said you got me the final question on the large <laughs> ending. <laughs> uh, so you're going to the fair, Peach. Yes. First time in a decade. Mm. What's your best fairground game, sir? <sighs> Good one. Good one. Um, a lot of the hoop shoots you'd think would be good, but they go with a bigger ball, small yeah. rim. You know, they put a spring in that backboard. A lot of trick stuff going on at the fair. Uh, I have a lot of success with those squirt gun games. Yeah, you kicked my ass I'm last time. I'm pretty good at those. That might be the one, but I like throwing the ping pong balls in to get the fish. I was always the best at that as a kid. Always left the fair with a bag of fish. All right. I don't think I'm coming back with fish this time, so I don't think they'll make the commute. Okay. I was hoping, see, we could have something new in the studio for you, ladies and gentlemen, next episode. Alien I'll, give, fish. I'll give it a shot. We'll for, call him Poku. Okay. For the sake of the show, I'm going to try to get some fish at All the right. fair. <laughs> All right. And that is the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's been real. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Peace. Thanks for coming.